What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over subsets 1. First we'll go over the input output along with the approach, then we'll look at the code, and finally the complexity. The input is going to be an array of distinct integers, and our job is to generate all the subsets. Now because it's going to be distinct, we can just call it a power set and know that we will have two power n elements in our output. So this is the output that they gave us, but it's kind of confusing to know how we go from this to this. Luckily, we don't have to give it in the order that they gave us. We can generate our own power set. So how are we going to do that? First, let's disregard what the output they're showing us and try to come up with our own. Think of the approach and the code by imagining how you want these subsets to get generated. So if I have a blank sheet of paper and I got this integer array and I'm trying to generate the subsets, what I would do is start small and simple. First, I would take an empty set. Then I would add the first element. So, so far we have empty and then we have one. Then I would add the second number so two to the here, and then I would have one and two. And finally, I would add three. So, so far we came up with the first four. That's simple so far. Let's write that down in our recursive stack. We have our empty set, and then we are going to add the number at index zero, so one. And then we're going to add the number at index one, so two. And then we're going to add the number at index two, which is three. So what we've done is taken our empty set and added a new number every time by incrementing some sort of a pointer, some variable to know which new number we're adding. So the new numbers, as you can see, I've underlined in red. Now that we're at the end of the array, we can't add any more brand new numbers. So what are we going to do? We have to figure out some way of removing numbers we've added and re-add them in a kind of different way or a different order. So first, if we take away 3, we'll go back to 1, 2. Can we add anything to this so that it's unique or it's new? We're out of numbers, so we can't do that. We have to go back one more. So now we're at 1. Can we add something to 1 such that it's new or there's a new order? Well, we can just add 3. Now we've come up with a brand new subset. So we're still going to check if we can create something new. Well, we're at the end, we're at three, so no, we have to start removing again. So then we go back. Uh, what can I add to one? I'm finished, so now we're gonna go back to the empty. Now we've exhausted the branch that begins with one. So then we move to the second number. Started a brand new branch with two. Can we add any more numbers to this subset such that it's unique or different? Yes. We can add three to this subset, so that becomes two comma three. Now that we're at the end again, we have to start removing. So I'll take away the three. Can I add anything to the two to make it unique? No, we're done with two and three, so we have to remove the two as well. Now we're back at the empty set. That's how we generate our final subset. If you noticed, every new number that's been added has been underlined in red, and at the same time, in green, I've highlighted the index in the array that corresponds to that element. So between the recursive stacks, each one of these, we are going to keep track of some sort of pointer variable, which is going to be an integer in the arguments to let us know which element in the array that we are going to add next. At the same time, we're also going to keep track of these branches. So here's the branch that's connected to one. Here's the branch that's connected to two. And here's the branch that's connected to three. If you notice, I broke them up even in this output according to the kind of branches. So the threes, the twos, the ones, and the empty. Let's articulate what we just worked through. First, we pictured our final solution and how to build it. So we didn't go along with what the output was in the example, but we thought about how we're going to build our solution. Next, 
the branches that started at each element. This refers to the elements that are starting at 1 or 2 or 3 and each particular branch that started out with that one as the first element. Next, pointers for number to add. If you recall, in each recursive stack, there was one new number that we added and we collected that as part of our final answer. Next, we kept track of each new subset. So as long as we didn't hit some sort of return condition, we kept track of every new unique generated subset. And finally, we removed added numbers. So every time we added a number and recursively called our function, we waited until that return and we undid the number that we added and we pretty much removed it from the end of the list that we just added it to. Now let's look at the structure of the backtracking. The structure of our backtracking algorithm is going to look like this. We begin our recursive function and first we write the conditionals for returning so we don't have a stack overflow or we're out of bounds or something like that. Then we collect our subset. This is the part at the beginning of each recursive stack that we collect the temporary set that's been generated. Next, we begin our for loop, which is going to be the branches. So if you recall, the branch that started from one, started from two, that started from three, is going to be because of this for loop iteration. Then within each iteration, we're going to add an element. This is going to be based on which new number we're adding and then we recursively call our function and finally remove the same element that we added. Now let's look at the code. The code is pretty concise. First, we initialize our result data structure. Then we're gonna pass it into our recursive function, which is going to take a temporary array list. That's what we actually add our numbers to. We initialize our pointer starting at zero and we also have our integer array. Then once we begin our recursion, first we're going to define our return condition. If we're trying to go out of bounds or we have too many numbers, we immediately return. Otherwise, we're going to take our temporary list and add it to the result. So at each recursive stage, we're going to immediately grab the subset and store it in our result. Finally, we get to our for loop, which is going to be how we begin branching. So, so i is initialized to p. This represents the actual pointer we're starting at for our branch. Then we're going to add our ARR of i into our temporary list and recursively call. Ultimately, once this returns, we're going to remove it. And finally, we return our result. Now let's go over space and time complexity. To easily understand the space and time complexity for this problem, let's redefine what a power set is. A power set, or the list or collection of all subsets, is the total sets we get by deciding to either take or not take an element in the input array. So because it's binary, meaning we either take or not take something for a length of n, we are going to get two power n. So why is our space complexity n times two power n? That's because if you remember from the output, we have a total of two power n number of items, but the length of those could be varying. That's why we're gonna do n times two power n because let's say one of the subsets could be the entire original array. So that's why the worst or the largest pretty much is going to be n times two power n for space complexity. Similarly, for time complexity, we're gonna have two power n first because we have two power n recursive stacks. And the reason we're doing n times this is because here, we're actually adding numbers to the temporary list. Now keep in mind, adding and removing from an array list is O of n. So that's why combinedly all of the recursive stacks are going to be added up and ultimately we're gonna have n times two power n. So that's how you solve subsets one. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, don't forget to subscribe.